Hello, everyone. This is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We're in Isaiah chapter 10, verse 9, Lamentations chapter 2, verse 19, and Acts chapter 4, verse 6. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you, Father God, for this word. Thank you for your children who are listening. Lord God, help us to know what to do and pray as it relates to the tribulation and those who we might love who are um, possibly going to face that. Lord God, help us to know what to say. And if not, help us to pay, pray these perfect prayers in tongues and in Jesus name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, Isaiah chapter 10, verse nine is not Kalino like Karkamish is not Hamath like Arphad is not Samaria like Damascus. All right. And so, um, the, this was just speaking, uh, comparing these cities who thought that they were indestructible. They were great, um, large forces to, um, cities that were already taken over and ransacked by Assyria. And so, um, it's just comparing these, like, you know, everybody's going to, they're all going to get destroyed. Right. And so, um, um, there was no exception. Right. And so, um, especially for the children of Israel who were, you know, in a state of rebellion. And so therefore, you know, God was using the Assyrians to come in and, you know, destroy the the city and the same with Babylon and the same with, you know, other countries that, that had um, come against the children of Israel. They were used to regulate, right? They were used to check the children of Israel and keep them in check, right? Um, turn their hearts towards God. And so there was no exception. There was no strong city that withstood. Um, when God's wrath is being poured out on the people, it does not matter the country that's being used. It is God's wrath, right? And there is no um, there's nothing that can stop his hand from moving, um, except for his own people. Right. And we'll read that here. And that's crying out to the father. It says Lamentations chapter two, verse 19, arise, cry out in the night at the beginning of the night watches Pour out your heart like water before the presence of the Lord. Lift your hands to him for the lives of your children who faint for hunger at the head of every street. So there were these children that had been abandoned, right? They, their, or their parents had been killed or carried off to bondage and so there was a call to to cry out to God for for this right and so um that's a foreshadowing of the tribulation right there will be children born in the tribulation there will be young teenagers there will be just people that are loved that are like children to us right even like childlike believers right new believers that have may have been in our family people who will believe after it occurs right people who have some semblance of of realizing what happened and what they're going to need to do to to be saved and so we need to arise and cry out for them why because the night is is going to be there for them and they're going to be in the night right the night watches are soon to come this is the time to cry out for those who are um going to be in need and actually this is something that the lord had told me earlier in the day today and it had been a part of previous scriptures that have been coming up just that we need to cry out um for the people who are going to be like little children in this thing they're going to be totally in desperate need and and crying out for help 
right? Crying out to know what to do. And that's something that we can make a difference in. And God wants us to cry out to him for them, for their souls. He wants us to cry out for them um, for that they can have the seeds of faith planted in them so that they can sprout out later in the tribulation um, so that they can have a heart that goes after God during this harsh time where there will be no um, spirit of truth leading them into all truth. They will have to seek Christ himself. They will have to search the scriptures. They will have to search their heart. They will have to cleanse their own garments. And so here, this is like crying out for them. It says, arise, cry out in the night at the beginning of the night watches pour out your heart like water before the presence of the Lord. Lift your hands to him for the lives of your children who faint for hunger at the head of every street. And there's going to be starvation everywhere. We know that according to the book of Revelation, talking about the inflation of prices um, just for a loaf of bread. And so um, we need to be crying out for them. And, and we can already see um, small glimpses of this now um, as it relates to, you know, inflation and also famine in other countries. So this, it, this should not be something that is so far-fetched for people to do. Think about somebody in your family that might be left behind. And if you can't think about anybody just think about people in foreign countries who could look like your children right who who uh, even if they don't look like them physically that look like you know someone that you know in your heart right um look like your own son your own daughter over there whose mother may not be conscious of the fact that her children might be left behind right so uh, maybe teenagers kids in college which i i've showed you guys um and in previous uh, dream, one of the first few videos that I did, of course, um, where it was talking about, um, I saw children, um, not young children, but I saw teenagers and college students that were left behind back in my hometown. Um, it was one of the first dreams, one of the first ones that God told me to tell. And he even made a, a lightning bolt strike by my car while I was in the car. And I was asking him, I was like, do you really want me to get on the internet and tell this, this dream? And he wanted me to so forcefully. And, um, I told the dream and so many people were affected by this because they know that they have young teenagers and, and kids who have rebelled right now who more than likely will be left behind. And that video, people are still watching that video, making comments about their family, about so many things, even teenagers, you know, moved by the video because they are, they know where they stand right now. And these are people that we can pray for. These are people that we can cry out to God for, that their heart might turn to him while there is still time. And even if they're left behind, that they cleanse their garments and do what's necessary to, to get themselves right with Christ. Um, let's read back that first verse again. Isaiah 10, 9 is not Kalino like Car Kamesh is not Hamath like Arphad is not Samaria like Damascus. We can look at the 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 analysis in the Word of God, and we can realize that these places were defeated. Right, these places were ransacked. Even Israel was ransacked. There is no exempt place right for the tribulation it will test the entire world right there won't be any strong um place that that is not affected and so we need to pray for them we need to be crying out to god for their souls acts chapter 4 verse 6 with annas um, Ananias, the high priest, and Caiaphas, and John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. And this is um, 
John and Peter um, uh, as they are having to stand before this council of men who looked godly, but they were not believers, right? They were, they were, um, they were of the Jewish council, the, um, and I want to say these are the ones that crucified Christ. If, if it's not, then this, these are just like the high priests, um, at the time in this place. And, you know, these people look godly, right? And that's, what's going to be in the tribulation. Um, uh, if not godly, but pious, they look like they could be standing in some sort of um, spiritual authority, right? But they're going to have to take a stand even in the midst of this wicked council. They're, the people of the tribulation are going to have to take a stand before these councils, the very intimidating antichrist spirit, the spirits of intimidation, the antichrist and his prophet, right? And so they're going to have to be strong enough to stand firm in faith, even without um, that constant um, Holy Spirit um, help. Right. And so, but we can pray for that. We can pray that they endure to the end because we know that this multitude that will come forth um, during the tribulation are going to be so numerous that they're not going to have a number. Right. Um, As they stand before the throne in white. And so we know that there will be many people who do this. So we need to be praying for those who do accomplish this. Pray for the children, the, the people, the people of India, the people of Africa, the people of America, the people of wherever, whoever Babylon is, who, who knows whoever Babylon is, which we mostly, you know, by this description, we kind of know who it is, but pray for the people that will survive the remnants, the, the small amounts of people in certain countries who will take a stand, the pay, people of Israel, the people of Jerusalem, the Netherlands, call out to God and, and, Pray for the children. You know, remember when it says um, you shouldn't treat, I can't think of the words now, um, these little children, their angels go before the presence of God. You have to look up the exact wording, but um, that little children there is actually speaking of new believers, right? When you look at, look at it in reference, it's talking about a new believer, not just a little child. And so we need to be praying for them. We need to be seeking God for them and not despising them because that that what will be that generation of children of young people um, are maybe the ones who are before the throne, right? Maybe the ones who um, end up serving God for eternity may end up being a part of that great multitude. And it's better one day in the courts of the Lord than a thousand elsewhere, right? It's better to serve in the house of God than it is to be anywhere else outside of the presence of God. So we need to pray for them. We need to call out to God for them. Amen. All right, you guys, let's pray. Thank you, Father God, for all these little children, little young believers, um, new believers, people that will be left behind, Lord God, the people that are in our families, um, the people that are, are going to just be in a state of devastation the people who have not chosen you during while it was still time while there was still time lord god we pray that you bless them god and help them to endure to the end help them to not fear death lord god help them to stand firm in faith lord god Help them to realize what they're going to see on the other side. Let them have a knowing, God. We know your Holy Spirit won't be there, but we know that you are everywhere, Father God. We give them up to you, Lord Jesus. We lay these people before your throne, these children, this great multitude that cannot be numbered, Lord God. 
Forgive us for ever trying to hold on to them or idolize them or or make them a part that we weren't willing to give up to you. Lord God, forgive us for that. Forgive us for putting anything else before you, Father God. We cry out to you, Jesus. You know what they have need of. We don't. Father God, give the hearts that are listening a prayer, Lord God, that they can cry out to you with, Jesus. Touch each heart that is listening, Lord God, so that they can call the names of people who may be left behind, Lord Jesus. The distress that is coming upon this world will be great, but you are a greater God. Help them to overcome. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, take care and be blessed.